Hello everyone, my name is Van Thu from University of Maryland. I will present Isopreer, a focus flux concept visualization for exploring large graphs. So interactive visualization is an effective approach for navigating large graph data, such as social media, highways, or gene pairs. When exploring a large graph on a relative small screen, if you have a target node, you can query to find and visualize the part of interest. If the graph have a hierarchical structure with only a few levels, you can effectively explore it with semantic zooming. Distortion is also a common solution. However, the current techniques either provide too limited distortion rates, such as the fisheye lenses, or too severe distortions, such as the hyperbolic display. In this work, we propose a novel focus plus contact technique, isosphere, that has a moderate distortion and provides better user ex experience. It maps a graph onto a Riemann sphere and can show both the focal details and overview context continuously within the same view. We attempt to develop a generic technique that can be used for any type of node link diagram independent of the size, structure, or layout. To this end, we use the projection-based approach that transformed the graph visualization into a focus plus context display as a whole. First, we lay out and draw the graph on the virtual plane. We then map the plane onto a sphere based on the inverse stereographic projection. And after that, the sphere is rendered and projected onto a two-dimensional viewport. I will give more details on the mapping and the projection steps. The stereographic projection we used was first introduced for producing maps. It projects the surface of a sphere, like the Earth, onto a plane like a map. It works by projecting a point P on the sphere from the North Pole to a point P prime that intersects with the equatorial plane. In nice sphere, we used an inverse of this projection which maps a point on a plane to the surface of a sphere. This is a conformal mapping and preserves angles. I won't go details into the uh, equation, but you can see more details in, in the paper. Usually, the south hemisphere of the sphere is rendered in, in the front of users based on orthogonal projection. The plane region inside the sphere is mapped onto the south hemisphere as the focus. The region outside the sphere is mapped onto the north hemisphere as the context. Points that are infinitely far away are compressed to the north pole. We introduced two approaches for this rendering process. First, the object-based approach uses the geometry property of the stereographic projection to map the nodes and links of a graph. Here, each node is mapped to a dot on the sphere, and each link, which is a straight line, becomes a circular segment determined by its endpoints and midpoint. This approach can produce high-definition displays and support interactions with the object, but it is hard to handle items beyond dots and lines. The pixel-based approach is more general. It first draws a graph and other visual components, such as heat map, on a 2D canvas, and then use GPU to map all pixels of the canvas to the sphere in parallel. This method will lose track of the object, but can be generalized to visualizations other than no link diagrams. We conduct user studies to compare the plane, hyperbolic, and isosphere displays under a variety of conditions, including the graph size, the graph structure, the window size, and we tested on three graph exploration tasks. I will give more details about each condition. We tested user's performance based on a small graph uh, with 128 nodes, medium graphs with 512 nodes, and large graph with 2,048 nodes. 
the average node degree is eight. We tested these con configurations with pilot users, and it produced feasible tasks with a moderate difficulty. We also controlled the community structure of a graph based on modularity. Intuitively, a graph with a high modularity shows clear community structures, whereas a graph with a low modularity shows no clear community structures. We display the graphs in windows of four different sizes to mimic mainstream personal computing devices, including the laptops and tablets, and mobile phones and smartwatches. Following the task taxonomy of graph visualizations, we designed three graph exploration tasks that focus on nodes, link, and paths. In the node exploration task, given a node A, users need to find the target node B with the highest degree in A's neighborhood. Here are examples of using hyperbolic and isosphere displays. In the link exploration task, given two nodes A and B, users need to find the target node C with the highest degree among the common neighbors of A and B. And let's look at how hyperbolic at isosphere works for this task. The last talk is path exploration. Given a path from node A to node B, users need to find the target node C with the highest degree among the nodes on the path. And here shows hyperbolic and isosphere. We conducted two within subject studies to cover all the testing conditions. Each study involved 18 participants. Study one tests how technique, graph size, and the modularity affect a user's performance on exploring a, a graph. We used a screen of a laptop computer. In the, in the node, node exploration task, we found no significant difference among the three techniques for all graph conditions. In the link exploration task, Hyperbolic was less accurate than isosphere and plane when the community structure is unclear and the graph is large. And in the past exploration task, we also found hyperbolic less accurate and slower than the other techniques when the graph is large, regardless of the graph structure. We collect users' preference for the three techniques. Most participants least preferred hyperbolic display mainly due to the distortion and unstable layout. For example, one said, it is very difficult to traverse all neighbor nodes in hyperbolic layout because the relative di distance between the nodes keeps changing. And similarly, another said, the shape of the graph changes greatly even after applying minor panning interaction. And that the distorted link confused me. It is hard to predict the, the direction I'm moving to. Most participants preferred isosphere because it requires less interaction to complete the task. For example, one said, Sophia's magnification helps me see details at the current focus. For the plane display, I need to zoom in to achieve the same level of detail. Another stated that less interaction was needed, especially for finding common neighbors and checking paths. And that for large data set, the sphere looks less dense, so it makes the exploration easier. However, we didn't find any significant difference in the performance of high sphere and plane, so we investigated into this issue. And the most common feedback was that tracing a straight line is more intuitive and effective than tracing a curve. So we can see in this figure, a triangle on a Euclidean plane becomes curved on hyperbolic or isosphere displays. This will impair user's performance. 
The second study tests how different window size affect users' performance on exploring a large graph using the plane or isosphere displays. Here we choose only to use large graphs to increase the difficulty of the tasks. And we also eliminate hyperbolic given its poor performance on large graphs and small screens. In the node exploration task, we again found no significant difference between isosphere and the plane under all conditions. In the link exploration task, isosphere performed faster than plane on small screens regardless of the graph structure. The accuracy result shows no significant difference. In the past exploration task, we have the similar finding that isosphere performed faster than plane on small screens. Users' feedback provides potential explanation for the results. One said, Sophia needs less drag and zoom operations. You need to drag and zoom a lot if the screen cannot show many nodes at a time. Another said, Sophia looks less crowded than plane. The Sophia is less distracting because it makes the screen much larger. The user also felt that the results are only valid for smaller screens and large graphs. For example, one said, if all nodes can be displayed clearly, Following links in the plane display is easier because lines are straight. In summary, we present Isosphere, a novel focus plus context graph visualization technique. We found that it is an effective solution for exploring a complex graph on a small screen. It also provides better user experience when compared to traditional plane-based graph displays. Thank you. I will be happy to take questions. Hi, uh, Tim Dwyer, Monash University. Um, this is really interesting. So um, I wonder, though, why you well, firstly, it seems like this technique, the iSphere technique, doesn't, uh, isn't aware at all of the graph structure. So it um, could equally be applied to any sort of visualization. Um, did you think to test it against um, techniques that are specifically designed for, for network visualization, like uh, I think bring and go and, uh, and other lens effects that are somehow aware of the topology of the graph? Um, yeah. I I agree that there are some uh, techniques that are designed specific for visualizing graph structures. But um, as I said in the first slide, we, our motivation is to design a generic yeah. uh, display. So, so we, we do not only focus on that has a, a clear structure, we also focus on that do not have a clear structure. So I think um, in the future, we may compare, but I'm not confident that we will beat them. But our, our technique is more general compared to those techniques. Thank you. Thank you. So actually, I do have a one question. So uh, looks like it's kind of working. It seems it's working in a graph structure. The similar question: Do you, do you apply this technique for other data types like a maps mm -hmm. or hyperbolic tree? Browser? Any comparison between like this thing compared to like hyperbolic tree browser kind of thing? Yeah, um, so you mentioned other data. I think you mentioned data outside no link diagram, not like a, like a map you said. So I think this using the pixel based uh, rendering technique, so you can actually uh, render any visualization onto the Sphere. So um, we do have plan for that, but in this work, we only focus on graphs because we want to compare to existing displays. But if we like, extend it to maps, I believe it will work, but it requires uh, additional study to see how it's benefit the users or not. Thank you.